Welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Audra Mitchell, and I'm the head of the Massey Learning Institute and your host for today's session. So today, as we continue to explore our leadership series, we will be examining the topic, the importance of inspiration. And I'm sure that you will all agree that this topic is timely as we navigate our current reality, and especially when some days seem a little bit harder than other days. And while we need to feel inspired, we must also aspire to be the source of inspiration for others. But we'll hear a little bit more about that a little bit later. So just a little housekeeping before we get started. We invite you as the presentation goes along to type any questions you may have in the Q&A box that is located on the top right hand corner of your screen. You should see it as an icon with a question mark. And there will be a Q&A segment at the end of the presentation where we'll try to cover as many of your questions as possible in the allotted time. Also, as is customary, a recorded version of this webinar will be made available to you. So please look out for the email. So now without further ado, it is my distinct privilege to introduce today's presenter, Mr. Juvis Warner. In his own words, Juvis describes his job as the following. I lead an organization that's creating a force for good for its people, for the Caribbean and the world. We are transforming the planet. Gervais has been president and group CEO of the Massey Group of Companies since 2009. Prior to his appointment, he also served as the executive chairman of the group's energy and industrial gases business unit and has served as a director of Massey Holdings Limited since 2004, the year in which he joined the group. Prior to his Massey experience, Gervais was a partner at the international management consulting firm McKinsey & Company, where he spent 11 years serving clients in the US, Latin America, and Caribbean across a wide range of industries. He currently serves on the Trinidad and Tobago Board of the City of Surrey. He currently serves on the Trinidad and Tobago Board of Citigroup Merchant Bank Limited, the Arthur Lockjack Graduate School of Business, and United Way Trinidad and Tobago. Jervis, welcome and thank you for joining us today. Audra, thank you so much for that wonderful, passionate introduction. And I can't say how much of a pleasure it is for me to be uh, here with all of you today. I think that um, this is my first webinar. So I am a, a webinar um, a newbie. And I would like to um, start off by uh, saying that the topic that I, I picked uh, for those of you who might have had an opportunity to see the uh, video message that I put out for the group at the beginning of at the start of the year it was a message about inspiration that I was inspired to, to, to speak about because of what I saw happening in our group of companies in uh, the 2020 uh, year in the midst of this um, uh, global pandemic. So you may ask, well, you know, why why am I making such a fuss about this? inspiration topic. Why, why is it important to talk about it in the first place? Well, inspiration is a funny thing. You know, inspiration is, is like a, a, a you know, it, you, you can't, it's intangible. It, it, yet, it's so important. It's that thing that really has us light up about what we do. It's that thing that gets us to extend that incremental piece of effort for whatever the task is or whatever the mission is because we have some deep connection and it helps us feel good. Since our inspiration is really absolutely like a secret source that we I think have going on in, within our group of companies. And so I, I wanna really um, kinda takes a little moment to spend some time 
kind of really feeling and having us all appreciate how important this is for each and every one of us. And so that's why I thought inspiration was a, a good a good topic to, to talk about. And um, I'm going to use some slides here to hopefully get the message across a little better. So the first thing I want to say about inspiration and why I think it's such a, a, a really wonderful and meaningful term of art is that inspiration really derives from the Latin word inspirare. And inspirare literally translates into to breathe life into. So if you think about breathing life into something or someone, the act of inspiring is really the act of having someone feel more alive. And if we can actively do that on an ongoing basis in the ways that we interact with one another, just think about it. We will have exceptional experiences of where we work. We'll have exceptional relationships with one another. And in fact, we will produce exceptional results. And I think that that's one of the great things that happened in, in 2020. And uh, later on, I want to talk about this a virtuous cycle of inspiration and, um, you know, what it, what it can actually produce when it's, when, it, when it's really working very well. But first of all, when I talk about this inspiration business, you may say, well, you know, inspiration is an easy thing to do if you like the people. Um, inspiration, however, is kind of difficult to do if you're trying to, you know, tell people, you know, constructive criticism or um, to, 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 you know, and people not performing. So I, I like to tell this story about myself. You know, I, I, I would have read my bio and in my bio it says I was a consultant before. I was a partner at McKinsey and Company and I spent 11 years at McKinsey working with a, with a very um, intense kind of work culture. And I, I had never run a business before, but I, I felt, you know, I was a partner and a partner as a P&L that they run. And, you know, I should, I, this thing of running a business, it shouldn't be too, too, too difficult. So one of the first things that I encountered when I returned to Trinidad and I started to, to work and took over the energy and industrial gas business unit, was that um, I found that people had a different way of relating to promises. So, so when I was a consultant, we had real hard deadlines. You know, we would have meetings and at the end of the meeting, we would say, okay, we'll do this by next Friday and then the another thing by the following Tuesday, and et cetera. And we'd assign it to people and, you know, next Friday would arrive and we'd have another meeting and say, okay, um, you know, uh, this thing that we said that we were going to do by Friday, you know, is it done? Can I see what we've done? People will look at me like I had come from another planet and say, um, you, you, you really wanted it for Friday? <laughs> but, but yes, I mean, that's what we agreed to. And, and so there was this, um, I mean, I, 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 had, I had two mentors, um, Kelvin Mutu and Jyoti Shera, who were real old school kind of um, uh, top down command and control guys. And, and I, I would see them buffing people. And in Trinidad parlance, a buff is, you know, when you speak, you know, down and harshly to a person. And so um, I, 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 I realized, look, I, I had to speak straight about this because, you know, we can't accept this. Um, but at the same time, something inside me told me, look, you know, I, I, I saw people get, I, I got buff. I, I remember not feeling good when you get buff. And, um, you know, I had to try to figure out my own way of um, sort of holding people to account, yet leaving them in a space where they were inspired for action. And so, uh, so I, 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 I talked about mastering the art of a good buff. A good buff is when, you know, you're speak to somebody and they're very clear that they did nonsense. Um, but they're not beaten into such submission that they're not motivated to continue to work and get things done. And one of the things that I've really discovered in my journey of, of, of you know, self-awareness um, is that there 
is no harsher critique, certainly of myself, than myself. And I don't think there's a harsher critique of any of us than ourselves. And so even when you have to have conversations that are conversations around performance or around holding to account, it is still not just possible, but I would dare say important to inspire people to breathe life into them so that they're left in a place of, 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 of excited action versus being shut down. So I, I, I wanted to, to, to give that little aside so we were, we were clear that you know, inspiration isn't just a happy-go-lucky thing, but inspiration can also happen as part of you know, the, the, the kinds of conversations that oftentimes we have to work about performance and accountability. So let me say one other thing about uh, inspiration. And uh, as you can see, here's President Obama making sandwiches for which he's ill-suited, right? So it's also really important when thinking about inspiring people in an organization and even yourself being inspired to really make sure there's a match between the job you've got or the job you're asking someone to do and their talents and passions. Now, if someone's talents and passions are really not lined up with the job that they have, you know, it's always going to feel like a job because it's not going to be a great expression of who they are. And so sometimes that is um, uh, delivered by purpose so that, um, you know, if someone can connect with the purpose of what their role is in their job, that can help them because that purpose can, can, can speak to them. Uh, but, you know, someone like President Obama really ought to be someone uh, out in the world leading, delivering speeches, um, you know, leader of the free world. Um, making sandwiches in a kitchen is probably a huge accommodation of the talent that he has. And he probably wouldn't find himself very happy in this, in this kind of job. So I say that because uh, as part of, 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 you know, thinking about your own personal inspiration and inspiring those around you, I think it's important to really, you know, get, get, get certain or, or feel, feel um, uh, sure that you are and people around you are in positions that really are great expressions for them and their talents and passions in life. Yeah. Okay, so now to get into this virtuous cycle of, of, of inspiration that I was uh, uh, mentioning earlier. So in 2020, COVID came in, we had all of these horrible restrictions on um, activities, and uh, many of us had to go into lockdown in different countries in different formats. While this, you know, awful virus that is still with us um, became something that we all had to implement enormous uh, safety and uh, sanitation um, uh, 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 measures to prevent the spread of it and prevent ourselves from from becoming infected. And a strange thing happened for us, and I, 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 it was strange, but in, in, in retrospect, you know, I do believe that, 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 that you know, luck is, is, is when, you know, opportunity meets preparation. So I think that there were years for which we've been preparing ourselves as a purposeful group. And uh, what happened in 2020 in this crisis was our purpose and values were allowed, you know, came, came forward, surging forward in this in this scenario and our response as, a, as, as individuals, our response as uh, teams, our, our response as, as companies and as a group really made a difference in the world. And what we saw is, you know, those of us who had to go out on the front line to you know, man our supermarkets, cashiers, go into warehouses to make sure food and pharmaceutical supplies were out there, go on to um, uh, plants or uh, uh, fields where our uh, where our clients really needed us to sustain energy supply to our countries, um, oxygen delivery, LPG delivery, etc. There were a number of, I mean, there were thousands of our employees who were on those front lines. And during COVID, 
there was a remarkable appreciation for the risk they were taking and the job they were doing that was, you know, there was an overwhelming outpour of love and appreciation, rewards and bonuses for these people um, on, on our front lines. And truly they were our heroes. They were heroes in all of our countries and we celebrated them as such. And you know what? Not surprisingly, that made them more happy. And one of the things that happens when people are happy, when they interact with our customers, when they interact with our suppliers, they interact with them with a, 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 a more generous spirit, a more you know, enthusiastic demeanor and an energy that delights our customers. And our customers seeking safety, seeking, seeking sanctuary in, 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 in um, uh, clean stores, and delighted by the service they receive from our local heroes in each of our countries who were doing these jobs. Well, they actually spent more with us. And because they were spending more with us, we made more profits. And with more profits, we as a group or we as separate companies could invest more in our happy employees. And when you have this virtuous cycle working, you can see how, you know, this idea of really making sure that our employees are inspired and happy actually creates better results for the company. And in 2020, in fact, the massive group of companies had record profits. In this environment of economic decline, in this environment of this horrendous pandemic, et cetera, et cetera. And make no mistake, that was in no small part due to many of you who are looking at this right now, who put out that incremental effort into what we were doing that allowed us to do a better job with our customers and our companies to do better in their respective industries. And for that, I have a huge thank you. Um, but also, I feel this responsibility to ensure that, you know, that wasn't just a COVID thing and that we are able to recognize the magic of that and make sure that we tend to sustaining that on an ongoing basis, even long after we're all vaccinated, um, which you know is a long process in of itself. So, so I, I, I hope that you guys can appreciate that this is this is not just something to do because it's nice to do. This is something to do because it allows us to have a better experience of where we work which allows us to deliver better service, which creates better results for our companies, which gives our companies the opportunity to create stronger and better rewards for us, which makes all of us happier. So, you know, let's make sure we tend to keeping this virtuous cycle going because it is working for us, but it's very easy for it to, you know, for us to come off this flywheel. So some of you might say, well, you know, Mr. Warner, that's nice, but um, are you not really experiencing that so much by me? You know, and, um, you know, when you look around in life, you know, generally that isn't what's happening. And so why doesn't it happen? Why is it not happening? Well, first of all, you know, we're all humans and we all have histories and pasts with things that have upset us in the past and things that make us fearful and things that, you know, we have had automatic ways to react to that have been successful for us in time. And because we're humans, we get hooked. And when we get hooked, we jump into some kind of automatic defense behavior, which on the receiving side is very inspiring. And so uh, one of the reasons that, you know, we, you know, you, you might not have great inspirational experiences all the time is let's recognize that everybody you interact with is a human being. And as a human being, 
we have this tendency to get hooked by issues that arise that, um, you know, if somebody corrects you, you might sound like your mother and how your mother made you feel and that maybe how you feel now and, you know, you, you begin to pout. As a for example, well, like that's how I would behave. <laughs> uh, so, so that's something to recognize. That's one of the reasons. The other reason is that um, we don't necessarily pay a lot of attention to how we impact people, and it's 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 really a a, a learned skill uh, that you that that you have to practice to remember to kind of check in with. I just said what I said. Well, how did this other person take what I said? What, what, what impact has that had on people? And oftentimes, that's because our ego has us too focused on ourselves and not on others. Well, you know, I got hurt in this scenario, so I struck back. And if he, or she didn't say what she said, and I wouldn't have said what I said. I only said what I said in response to what they said. And they should apologize. And if they don't apologize, well, then they got what they deserve. Right. So <laughs> but you can see how that lack of attention to others and natural attention to ourselves, this is, this is, this is human being stuff, um, can lead to situations where we would be less than inspiring with one another. And the last thing that reason that this sometimes doesn't happen is um, Sometimes we think that we can only afford to do inspiring things when our company is doing well, yeah? And sometimes we equate, you know, inspiring people to money. And that's just not the case. I think we all know the case, you know, inspiration costs nothing. Inspiration is the act of breathing life into people, yeah? So what can you do? Well, first of all, from the perspective of making the decision to be an inspiring person yourself, one of the first things that you can do is actually make a decision as to whether this is something you really want to do. And I, and I, I make a big point of this because if you really want to do this, you're going to have to deal with some of the things about you. I've had to deal with many things about me, and I'm still dealing with them. It's an unending list. So, um, because, you know, if you want to really make a difference and inspire people, you're going to have to locate your interest and intent outside of yourself and with other people. So once you've made that decision, and it's a serious decision, the next big thing there is for you to do is to actually share with people that this is your intention. You see, um, if you don't, then it's just a promise and a kind of decision you've made in your mind. When you tell people that this is your intention, you're now on that skinny branch of, oh dear, now that I've declared this, if I am not being that way, well, people could tell me about it and I might look bad. So that's why I say, you know, go back to the top, really decide if you want to do this, because if you want to do it, and I encourage you to, Telling people that that's your intention is an important first step. And there's a little practice. I try to do it, which is, which, which is if, if you like, the easiest and best way to start to be able to learn how to do this well, which is to just check in with people at the end of your conversation to see where you've left them, what impact have you had. I can't tell you how many times I've done this and realize that I really screwed up the conversation because what they're left with is absolutely not what I intended in the conversation. And I just thank heaven. I mean, I, this, happens, this happens to me all the time, that I did check in because I could go back and clean up impressions, interpretations, things I said that maybe I didn't see it the way that it was more effective for them to hear and you get better at being able to inspire people and deliver messages that you mean if you check in at the end of a conversation to see what, not just what did people hear, but where are they left? Because actually people really, as, a, as, as um, oh, oh goodness, I'm not forgetting your name. Um, anyway, the saying that people really don't remember what you say. What they remember is how you make them feel. 
So when you're checking in with people, it's not what did you hear for them to regurgitate the words that you said. But you want to check in to see where they're left, what emotional space they're in. Okay. And so then lastly, you can say, well, okay, I mean, I can take on myself. That's okay. I can do something like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to go. I'm willing to take on. But what about my boss? I mean, my boss shifts the environment for my entire team. So um, this is good. I hope your boss is listening. <laughs> I think that one of the things that you want to do if you want to create an inspirational team is, you know, make this assessment as to whether your boss is open to a conversation about improving the performance of your team. You know, performance is an excellent angle, right? Any, if, you've got a, if you've got a leader at Massey who's not interested in uh, having a conversation about improving the performance of your team, Please let Audra and I know because you know that clearly is some help that we will need to provide to that leader. We have that expectation of every leader at Mappy, okay, at all levels in our organization, right? So hopefully that first assessment is, is, is it goes simple enough. The second is to assess whether you can be a confidant for him or her. Um, what do I mean by that? Are you the best person? Maybe there's somebody else in your team uh, who has a stronger listening at this point in time that might be the right person to approach him or her to get into this conversation about using inspiration as a key performance lever within your team. And if it's you, if it's somebody else, once you have that, then, you know, have a discussion around this virtuous cycle that I just described in the context of your team or your company and what that could mean for the performance of your team or, or, or company. It's irrefutable, right? No, no one can argue with that. And then perhaps the most difficult part of, of it is explicitly having conversations about goals, expectations of one another, including results and behaviors and the conditions under which each person does their best work. I mean, fairly simple, fairly straightforward, I think quite practical, something that you can take on doing with your teams tomorrow or this afternoon. And um, I'm sure that as you journey honestly in, in, in this conversation together and um, really fall back on interest in one another, less so interest in yourself, um, you will have spectacular results and you will do great things. I leave you with this message that um, Bob Chapman shared with us. Uh, and Bob Chapman is, 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 is the author of this um, initiative around truly human leadership. The way we lead influences the way people live. And that's so important that we take on the responsibility for the way that we, the way that we lead. So that's my little presentation. I'd love to see what questions have come up in the chat and open the floor for some discussion. Um, Audra, over to you. Great, great. Wow. Thank you, Jervis, for such powerful nuggets. And yes, there are quite a number of questions here for you. So I'm going to hand you over to Renny Barnett, who will be moderating our Q&A session. Thank you so much, Audra. Thank you so much, Mr. Warner. So our first question this morning, how do you inspire the uninspired due to the environment? For example, COVID, the lockdown, lack of personal interaction? Yeah, that's a really, 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 really great uh, question. And I really believe that breathing life into people comes from appreciating what there is to create, yeah? So there are lots of reasons for us to be depressed in this COVID environment. But there are also a lot of, um, I would say, uh, visionary, impactful things for us to do in this period that one needs to speak to. So as, as, a, as a leader in any organization, we could focus on you know, what's bad or we could focus on what's good and what's working. You know, being aware of, 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 of our environment and what's not working is really important. But if, if you guys know me, I, I always want to focus on what can we do about things, yeah, and, and, and what is working. So in this COVID environment, for example, 
here we are. I mean, this COVID environment created this webinar um, uh, 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 interface, this webinar opportunity. You know, if we didn't have COVID, we wouldn't have, you know, four or 500 of us spending an hour together this morning. I know that many people are in, in, in much closer contact with one another because you can't see one another, you can't be, be together. I really can't overemphasize the difference that the Massey Group of Companies is making in our countries and on this planet at this time, from assuring food security to supporting um, uh, 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 people who are unable to um, you know, get food because of the hampers that we distribute, to assuring oxygen supply in the countries where we provide that, to donations that we make, to supporting um, the acquisition of test kits, to now certainly in Trinidad, a conversation about the acquisition of vaccines, to uh, working on issues of economic recovery. Uh, so there are just so many things that we as a group of companies collectively uh, doing and uh, to, to, to really help people survive and thrive in this environment that those uninspired or, or, or happening to fall into funk in this environment, um, you know, I would go through, that's the door that I would walk through. I would walk through the door of the difference that we make. Um, I, I'm gonna, sorry, extend the answer to this question. One, one Christmas, um, 1992. My wife and I were, were at business school in Boston. We were scheduled to come home. My wife was for our first pregnancy. And um, it was an ectopic pregnancy. We had to, we had to, we had to miss Christmas. We, we couldn't fly home. She had to be monitored by doctors while they treated this, this uh, pregnancy in a fallopian tube. Christmas Day came and it was just herself and myself. School, nobody was there. Just, no one had grown. I mean, it was a depressing scenario. Yeah. And um, so what we did is we found a, a Catholic church that had, um, that was serving breakfast to homeless people that Christmas morning. And that's what we went off and, and did. And um, it was such fun, such joy. We came home afterwards and we felt so fulfilled. Why am I sharing this story with you? In your, 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 your most depressing moment, there's always somebody out there who's having a worse time and experiencing it worse. Go out there, help other people. Be cognizant of what we do to help other people in these hard times. And uh, there's huge fulfillment and huge um, reward in self from, from, from taking those types of actions and focusing on where you can make a difference. So, I'm uh, sorry, long, 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 long response to an excellent question. Thank you. Thank you so much. This next question is a good follow on question. How do you breathe life and not fear? Oh, absolutely. Uh, uh, so, so that one's very easy. I mean, we all know the difference between life and fear. We all know it. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's not, um, it's not uh, uh, hard to tell. We can all have, we all have the experience ourselves. And uh, we all know the, the, um, uh, emotional feelings, even as we are delivering it, right? So if you're delivering it in your blood hot and, 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 and it's an out of an agitation, you know that you're going to probably deliver this thing in a way that's going to incite fear. If there's love in your heart, if there's interest in the other person, you know you're breathing life into the person. So, you know, it's not a rocket science definition. We all actually know it deep in our hearts and spirits. You know, you just have to be human to know. Wonderful, thank you. Our next question is from Jody. How does one continue to work and function effectively while being uninspired? It is extremely difficult to work and function effectively while being uninspired. Um, you know, to be honest, whenever that has happened to me in life, I've, uh, I've tried to change the circumstance I'm in or change the circumstance I'm in. <laughs> what I mean by that is I try to change the environment in which I'm working or I move to another environment that is not that, not, that, is not that one. And I've already only had one experience in my life where I've really just had to move 
from the environment in which I was working. That was one of the first jobs I ever had in life. So, so one of the first things is to assess whether, you know, is this because, you know, this is, you know, you're in an uninspired team or you're in a job that's not a good match, match for you. And if it's the job that's not a good match for you, then, you know, ultimately you should be seeking to try to make a move. Um, and, and that's about expressing your interest to do something differently to um, your supervisor, your boss, somebody in HR, um, and uh, then being patient to wait for something to happen. If, you know, it's not your job, and quite frankly, it's your team, it's your boss, then, you know, really what I suggested in the presentation around, you know, first of all, don't ask people to do something that you're not willing to do for yourself. So if you're not willing to speak in an inspirational way, then it's going to be very hard for you to influence anybody else around you to be inspiring. Uh, so, so, so you, you got to, and that's why I, I talked about yourself first. You know, you got to make that decision if you want to live an ex inspired life yourself. And um, you know, sometimes that's just sufficient. Just, just you changing the way that you are, things will change around you. But if you change the way you are, and you still find that like your boss and others, then you can start having some of these explicit conversations. But you know, you got to assure yourself and get feedback from these you know, end of conversations that you are indeed leaving people with more life uh, uh, after a conversation with you and you're not taking life away from them after conversations with you. Thank you. Similar question, how do you inspire an employee to think differently or think more? Think differently or think more? Um, well, I think that, again, when, you, when someone's inspired, and when you remove fear, people will automatically gravitate to being more present and you will get more from them in thoughts as well as in action. So it's really important to create space for people to express ideas, for people to participate, ask questions, ask questions that some might think are rude, challenge the status quo. And if you aren't creating that kind of space, it's very difficult to insist that people think differently or um, think more. You know, you've got to create the room for that and yeah, give people the confidence uh, to do so. I also think that, that also starts with setting more ambitious objectives uh, for, uh, for, for your team. And um, I think that the teams who have the greatest ambition and aspirations, you know, almost, almost by definition, call for more from their team members because to achieve that, you know, we have to think differently and we have to think more. So I hope that answers it. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to the next question. How do you inspire the workers that don't have the ability to work from home, but whose salaries have been cut in the name of managing costs, while the office staff and management have received increases? These persons are typically in the lower income bracket and have been told that sacrifices have to be made, but it seems that the sacrifice is only made at their level. Wow, that's... Um... That's a, a, a sad question. Uh, it's a sad question because um, where those decisions are made and implemented like that, I do not think that those are inspirational decisions by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, so I would really encourage leaders in our organization to look at where sacrifices need to be made and be the first to make sacrifices. And if we need to make greater sacrifices, it, it, is, it is absolutely important that those who have more cushion um, feel more sacrifice than those that we are asking who have a lot less cushion to make. So, um, that's just a principle of equity I think is important. 
I, I, I say it's a sad question because I, I, I know of, a, of, a, of an instance where, with all good intentions, it was poorly implemented. And um, it did result in the consequence of the circumstance to, that, that I, I understand that that question is coming from. Uh, my understanding is that the leaders in that circumstance do recognize that, well, that, that didn't go very well. And they are in the process right now of correcting for that. So uh, I remain open to that conversation by whoever is asking the question. So you know, to, you know, to find me. And if 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 uh, you want to have more of a concerted discussion on it, I, I I remain available. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Before we move on to the next question, we have Roxine here welcoming you. Welcome to the wonderful world of webinar presenting, Mr. Warner. <laughs> <laughs> it is different. I can't see people. I don't like that. I like to see the people. <laughs> All right, our next question. Most times we do not pay attention to the impact we have on people. How do we sustain an environment where we pay more attention to others the same way we did when COVID first hit and when the company was doing well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the whole, that's, that is the thesis of why we're here this morning. I think I, if there's a concern I have is that we relax on that appreciation for others that we developed in, in COVID. And, and, and literally that is why I chose this topic for this webinar, because I think it is so important. I can't do it by myself, I can call uh, for it, but I think all of us uh, uh, sort of, it, it quite frankly, it's, it's in our own enlightened self-interest to continue to do this because it works so well. We've seen the benefits of it. We would be foolish to uh, move away from it. There's no reason to, it, it feels good. We like it, people feel good around us, we get better results. Why would we not do this? Uh, <laughs> you know, it, it's like, well, you know, but we can get comfortable, complacent. Um, we could, you know, have our egos, you know, kick back in, um, et cetera. We can get lazy around the discipline of self-control, whatever, whatever, whatever. But I think we really can't afford to, you know, move away from this secret source that is making a huge difference in the experience that we have at work and the results that we are producing. So I'm really happy. I love that question because I'm like, no, let's not do that. Great, great. This question is similar to what was asked earlier, but is it possible to inspire the people around you when you yourself may not feel inspired? No. <laughs> no, <laughs> you've got to start with yourself, yeah, um, because if you don't have breath to breathe into others, <laughs> don't try <laughs> because you're likely to suck breath away from them, right? Uh, you will be looking to pull breath away from people for your own personal uh, uh, ingestion. Uh, so, so really, um, and I think that that really is a decision, and it, it, it is a decision that you say, look, is it that the environment I'm in is one that, you know, I'm in the wrong job, I'm in the wrong company, um, or is it that, you know, the way that my team is running is not inspiring and how can I take on being in, 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 in inspiring and caring about the people around me? And, you know, inspiration isn't, um, it, 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 it is generative, but it is generative with an interest in others. Yeah, so it's not like you have to have something special within you, some insight. It, the special thing you need to have in you is this commitment to paying attention to other people. All right, thank you. How can you help your boss? This person is asking if you can go through that again. Great, sure. So again, it first needs to start with you, right? So if you're not prepared to do the kind of things that I mentioned are important to be inspirational yourself. And, and that really is sort of, you know, making a declaration and then actually having conversations with people in a way that you check in afterwards to make sure you're leaving them in a place that is better than the place in which they started the conversation with you. Albeit sometimes it's, 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 it, 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 it may not be a comfortable place, 
So if it's a performance conversation and somebody came in with no appreciation for the situation and, and what they get from the conversation is appreciation for a performance gap, yet confidence in uh, them and inspired to do differently, you know, they leave the conversation in a, in, a, in, a, in a place that is not necessarily comfortable, but in a place where they are motivated to do something um, and, and to take actions quite differently from the actions they may have taken uh, before. So, so, so really the first place to start is with, is with, is with you. And then, um, as I mentioned in the slide, we have a, every expectation that any leader in the Massey Group of Companies is familiar with our expectations of Massey leaders and approached about um, having a conversation around how can we use inspiration to have our team or our company perform better. That person should be interested in, in, in such a conversation. And so, you know, if, if, as I said, if we don't have a, a boss who is like that, then that's, that's something that is failing to meet the expectations that we have for our leaders in the group. And then, you know, it, 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 it is the case that then we, we can then start having, you know, a conversation about what does that mean and, and sharing the virtuous cycle and this is what we're after, that, you know, happy employees, happy customers, more profit, more investment and happy employees, happy customers, more profit, more investment, you know, that's virtuous cycle. And um, you know, the thing with that virtual cycle is nobody can argue with that virtual cycle. Nobody can say, I don't want that. You see, I don't want to be happy. I don't want the customers to be happy. I don't want to make more money. And I don't get clearly, therefore, I don't want, I want to be stingy with any further investment. Um, uh, you know, people maybe feel stuck that we don't have enough profit to make the investment. And that is what makes happy employees. Happy employees does not start with money. Money is one of the rewards and places we can get to. But happy employees actually start with an interest in your employees and doing the right thing for your employees. Um, yeah, so, so, so after that, then you can have a, a conversation as a team, you know, what are our goals? What are our objectives? What do we expect of one another? You know, what works best for me in terms of how we work? You know, uh, and you have those conversations openly. And, you know, the fact that you start that conversation is going to be an inspiring moment for sure and for certain. And then you take it from there. All right. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Moving on to our question from Gavin. What is your best advice on keeping focus and inspired on the import? On, sorry, on keeping focus and inspired on the importance when the distractions in our lives are constant? Yeah, so um, it's a very good question. Very, very good question. Uh, this is uh, one of the major challenges that has been ushered in by technology, the pace at which we work, the pace at which life takes place. And um, with this remote working environment, it becomes even more challenging because, uh, you know, we're at home and you know it's like if you don't allow if you allow it to work never switches off so one of the i guess talents one of the um, important um, uh, concepts that i think we all have to have is some sense of what's really the most important things for us around family around health around all of the things they are to do at work and developing discipline about you know really allocating time uh, to those things because we can be pulled into minutiae we could be pulled into you know really task driven um, uh, uh, activities that don't really make a difference and it's perhaps the one of the most important skills that we have to learn as we mature this idea of prioritizing and recognizing what really is important, um, what really makes a difference, and being able to say no to other things. And again, you know, staying inspired, if you're working on the most um, uh, important, highest priorities, things that make the most difference in your life, personally or professionally, you will feel more inspired and you'll inspire more people around you. Uh, some of us 
I, I know that I'm one of those people who have difficulty in, in saying no. We think that that's going to disappoint people. We don't want to be disappointed. So we say yes and then can end up uh, actually not doing a good job of any of the things to which we've committed. And <laughs> that's really an inspiring place to be as well. So building up that discipline is really important. Uh, spending the time, you know, take, take a half hour to actually write it out for yourself so that you are, are, are thinking it through and you're not just letting it happen. That's a good practice to start with, but it's a very, very important um, uh, uh, topic, subject to really get a handle of because it is important for your life uh, to be inspiring and fulfilling. Excellent. Thank you. This next question is similar to the one prior. How do you inspire people whose salaries were cut due to the COVID-19 and it seems that the grocery prices are going up and survival is still the number one priority? Yeah, so again, I, I, I think it's similar to the first question that was asked. And, um, you know, I think that uh, we have had situations in which because of ours um, and, and, and many of them dictated by, um, uh, you know, these COVID restrictions, people have not been able to work the same number of hours to which they might have been accustomed and therefore uh, are earning less. And, 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 you know, there's always inflation in all of our societies. So this is, uh, this is, this is a very difficult scenario for, um, for, 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 for people individually to sustain. And I think that they're, they're quite honestly straight questions and conversations to have with um, you know leaders in those circumstances about here are the facts and you know what what can we do? Um, I, I do believe again that 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 you know equitable sharing of pain is very important, and those with more cushion are in better positions to um, uh, uh, share uh, sh share pain than people in, in with, with less cushion. I, I, I do firmly uh, believe that, um, and. You know, I, that's what I encourage. It's, it's certainly the message that I share with all of the uh, chairmen, CEOs, business unit leaders across the group. And uh, it, I think it's an important principle for us to to, um, to to really bear in mind in an environment like this. Yeah. And, um, you know, we started Nudge, um, as you know, as a, a, a vehicle to help people um, be inspired by things that are sort of more independent activity. And there may be instances where, you know, people have uh, uh, ideas, uh, uh, what we call side hustles that they feel, you know, they might want to explore more. Uh, so people have asked, you know, that will Nudge support employees within the group? And the answer is yes. Um, and, and that's a big part of the uh, inspiration message as well. We want people to live inspired and in, in, inspired life. Uh, one way or the other. So there may be other ways um, uh, that that income can be augmented and circumstances can be alleviated. Um, you know, we're open to a wide variety of, uh, if you like, um, uh, different types of, of solutions that may not be traditional. Thank you for that answer. Our next question, we have Roxine here again. How do you coach managers and supervisors? Whose managers and supervisors are deflating them? Okay, got it. Okay. This is uh, we, we, this is this is like recursive. It's coming from from way above. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, encourage them to watch the webinar <laughs> and share the webinar with others uh, because I think this is a message that is not controversial. It's a message that, quite frankly, there are many. And it's beyond pockets. There are many places in the group where this is working very well. And if it's not working well uh, in, in, in your area, and uh, it is beyond just your manager or supervisor and it's coming from further up in the organization, well, there's a conversation to have with your manager and supervisor for them to have with their manager and supervisor about the environment that we're trying, that we're trying to create. Or you can talk to the HR um, or, uh, a person who's associated with your company or, or, or portfolio and see if they can be helpful in um, sort of kicking this off within, within your business or your team. So I, I think this is an important question, right? Because 
we all have the opportunity to cause this. Even if we're not the CEO or the director or the top person in the organization, we all have the opportunity to cause this. Well, one, the webinars here, it's going to be stored. So, you know, you can say, well, at least the group CEO said that we should do this, which, you know, I think is a message that nobody's going to disagree with. As I say, I think that it's really a big part of the secret of our success in 2020. Uh, secondly, remember it all begins with us individually. And so when, and, and, this, and that's why it's not easy, right? It's not easy because we, we might want it to start with somebody else, right? Let my manager or my supervisor start with this and then I will show up and I'll start to do this well. But it don't work so. <laughs> it just doesn't work so. If you want to be an agent of change, you must start being the change you want to see. You know, it, 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 that, it, 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 it's a, a well understood, well retold uh, uh, saying from, from Mahatma Gandhi, right? So, um, yeah, but that opportunity does exist. And you start being that way and start having conversations from that space magic will happen around you. Awesome, thank you. So we're running out of time, but I think I can ask one more question before we hand back over to Audra. And this question is from Gerald. Can you recommend some literature on becoming an inspirational and or a charismatic leader? Um, yes, so um, Everybody Matters would be a, a good book by Bob Chapman. I, I think that's a that's a really, really good book about um, truly human leadership and inspiration is, I think, really synonymous with truly human leadership. And it's a book about the responsibility that we have and increasing responsibility we have as we climb the corporate ladder for taking care of the lives in our charge. So that would be the book I would recommend. Or Drew agrees with me, so there. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Rene. Really. To to You're welcome. Great. Thank you, Rene. Thank you, Jervis. Wow. So as we come to an end, I would really like to thank each and every one of you, not only for your honest, powerful and insightful questions, really heartfelt and we, we can get that, you know. So we want to thank you for that, you know, for having the courage to step into this space and ask these questions that will really cause us to reflect and respond. Also, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for joining us today. We hope that today's session has left you a little more reflective a little more inspired and moved to take some action, even to a small degree. And my question for all of us is this, what are you going to do differently as a result of what you've heard today? And how are you going to breathe life into those around you, both at work and at home? And as I said, this is a question for all of us, myself included. So on behalf of all of us at MLI, I wish to thank Juvis for making the time to be here with us. And Jervis, we look forward to hosting you again in the very near future, thinking we can probably call it Ask Jervis because we had quite a number of questions we didn't get to given the time, you know, so we'd really love to have you back and have our employees engage with you as they did today. Thanks to Jamon for our technical support, Rene, our moderator, and the rest of the MLI family. So please continue to look out and sign up for upcoming programs as you continue to level up. Bye everybody, have a wonderful rest of the day. Take care.